Hello, my name is Joan, and I'm going to talk about the work I've been doing to make non-support headless sessions and display them remotely using the RTP protocol without the need of a user being physically present at the remote system. So, as I said, my name is Joan Torres. I'm working at SUSE. I joined SUSE for about one and a half years ago. I'm a graphics engineer. And I'm working remotely. I live in Spain in a small city in Alicante. It's a great place. We have the coast, we have mountains, nice weather. Although here, uh, these days are good days also with nice weather, so cannot complain. So first, I'd like to introduce you the subject, speaking a bit about the state of the art, about the current approaches we have that provide remote desktops uh, with XOR and with Wayland. Most of these approaches are demons, so I'm going to say the word demon a lot of times. So with XOR, there's the XVNC. XVNC is a daemon that starts a headless XOR server, and on top of it, you can start any desktop environment you want, and it uses the VNC protocol to provide the remote access. Um, I think some of you might know it or might have used it because it's quite popular. Then there's also XRDP. It's very similar. It also starts a headless XOR server, but in this case, instead of starting a, uh, using VNC protocol, it uses the RDP protocol. And it's a bit different because you get a small greeter and you can use it to authenticate and, and then you get the, the user session you want. The last thing I want to tell about XORG is I'm going to talk about the XDMCP. XDMCP is not a, a daemon that is not starting a headless XORG server. It's an extension of the XORG uh, protocol. Uh, this allows that a display manager to start a login screen on an XORG server. The display manager is the program in charge of creating the, the login screens. So here is an example of using the XOR server from XVNC, on top of it, starting a login screen, and then the user remotely can authenticate and start the desktop uh, environment. And this looks like a lot of the approach I've done. Now, switching to Wayland. So in Wayland, it's a bit different, because with XOR, we were, we were having an XOR server that at the same time is the, the uh, VNC server or the RDP protocol, uh, RD server. In this case, with Wayland, it's separated. On one side, you have Wayland Compositor, and on the other side, you have the daemon that is uh, providing the, the VNC server or the RDP server. So in this case, there is Sway and WaveVNC. Uh, Sway is the Wayland Compositor, and WaveVNC is the daemon that provides the remote access using the VNC protocol and WaveNC so must be attached to, to a Wayland compositor. And WaveNC works only with Sway and other Wayland compositors that are implemented with the WL Roots library. Now, with KDE Plasma, there's also uh, an approach, a solution. Uh, it's called the KRFB. It's very similar. So you have the Wayland compositor. In the case of KDE, it's called KWIN, and then KRFB, attaches to this Wayland compositor and provides remote access using the VNC protocol. And last but not least, actually this is the most important part because I've worked on this program, is the GNOME remote desktop. I think most of you know GNOME, I've used GNOME, but who knows about the, the remote desktop feature that GNOME is providing? You know it. You know it, yeah, good. So, for the ones that don't know it, non remote desktop is also a daemon that it's attached to a GNOME session and communicates with the, the Wayland compositor of the GNOME that it's called Matter and provides remote assistance. In this case, it uses the VNC protocol and also RDP protocol at the same time. And one thing I'm going to say about the GNOME remote desktop is that it uses the, the, the daemon, it uses the it needs to communicate with Pipewire and Matter, and communicates with Matter through a DBoss interfaces that Matter exposes called Remote Desktop and Screencast. So this is important. It needs to communicate with the Pipewire and uh, Matter through DBoss interfaces. 
Now that you are warm, now that you know more about this, I'm going to speak about what I've done, okay? Most of the work I've done is uh, with, in the GNOME Remote Desktop and GDM. And also I've done a bit of work with GNOME Cell and GNOME Session to make them uh, start headless sessions. The overview of my approach is that an RTP client is going to connect to the remote system and on the, on the RTP client we'll get the, the GDM login screen, the user will authenticate and will get the user session. All of this happening headlessly independently of what is going on on the local system, on the remote system. So let's break it down. Now, what we currently have is the GNOME Remote Desktop daemon. I'm calling it like the user daemon because it's uh, running at the user session, it's running as a user service, and it's in charge of displaying remotely the user session. But we need a different behavior. So I've created, I've abstracted the user daemon and I've created a system daemon, the GNOME Remote Desktop system daemon. This one is not running at the user level, but at the system level as a system service and it's not in charge of displaying user sessions, but greeter sessions, like the, the login screens. This, this daemon is in charge of displaying this, and it's running as a GDM user, because it uses some GDM resources, so this system daemon is running as GDM user. So to clarify the names, I'm not going to say all times, the GNOME Remote Desktop User Daemon and the GNOME Remote Desktop System Daemon, but I'm going to say User Daemon and System Daemon, okay? Now, when the RTP client will connect, who's going to create this headless greeter? Well, it will be the GDM, GDM daemon. To make this possible, I've had to add a DBAS interface that the GDM is exposing and that the system daemon is going to use. So when a new RTP client is connecting and then authenticates with the RTP protocol, if that authentication succeeds, then the system daemon will request to GDM, please, create a greeter for me. And then the, the GDM will create this headless greeter and will tell to system daemon, hey, this is the new greeter. Here you have the pipe wire and the DBAS session address this greeter session is using. So now the system daemon can communicate with pipe wire, can communicate with matter, and can display remotely the login screen. So this is, this is good. And with this approach, the system daemon is able to display multiple greeters at the same time. Now, the next step that is going to happen is that the user authenticates successfully. And what's going to happen? That a user session is going to be created, a headless user session. GDM will be in charge of starting this headless user session, and GDM will tell to the system daemon, hey, there's been a successful authentication, and now we have a new user session. Now, then the situation is that we have two different sessions. We have the system daemon that was displaying the, the greeter session, and now we have a different session. It's running a different matter instance. It's running as a different user. So we, this is a bit like, what are we gonna do now? How can we make the system daemon display this new session? This part is the most critical one, the funniest part, and also, yeah, the part where I've work more. So the, the solution is that we are going to hand over the connection. Uh, we can hand over the connection thanks to the RTP protocol. That's why this approach is based on, with the RTP protocol. The RTP protocol has a method called server redirection. The server redirection is a method from the RTP protocol that allows that an RTP client can reconnect to a different RTP server without the user realizing that this reconnection to a different RDP server is happening. And this is great and fits for this use case. So, I say, I'm, I'm saying that the RTP client is connected to a different RTP server. So, on the new user session, there needs to be a, an RTP server. So, I've had to create a, a, a handover daemon. So this is a behavior very similar to the user daemon, but in this case, the handover daemon is starting only at, head, at headless user sessions. And also it's not getting the RTP client directly from the RTP port, but from the system daemon. 
So the handover daemon must communicate with the system daemon to get the RTP client. So the system daemon is exposing a DBAS interface that the handover daemon will use to communicate with the system daemon. So then, the handover daemon has been started. The handover daemon can communicate with the pipe wire, can communicate with matter, and then we'll tell to system daemon, hey, I'm ready, you can start the handover. Telling this to, to the system daemon will also send some information, one-time credentials and other stuff that is going to be needed by the RTP client when we connect to the handover daemon. So, um, sending this information to the system daemon, and at the same time, the system daemon is going to create a routing token. The routing token is a unique identifier that relates the RTP client with this handover daemon. Then the system daemon is sending this server redirection packet with the information that the handover daemon gave, the one-time credentials and so, and also this routing token. So system daemon sends this information to the RTP client, and the RTP client, what is going to do? Is going to disconnect and reconnect again. But this time, when the RTP client is reconnected, the RTP client is sending on the first bytes this routing token. The system daemon is picking these first bytes, and it, the system daemon will find out, hey, this, there is a routing token. So now I know that this RTP client must go and connect with this handover daemon. And user the DBAS interface, the system daemon will hand over the, the RTP client to the, hand, to the handover daemon, and then the RTP client will initialize the connection, authenticate, and the user will be starting using this user session. And all of this is happening, yes, yes, uh, headlessly. So now I'd like to show you a small demo of, of this working. And if everything works fine, you could take a look. I've already started a virtual machine that has the, the GNOME remote desktop and the other parts of the GNOME, the modified versions with these changes. So I, I just uh, connect with an RTP client. I'm using the free RTP client. I'm using the RTP credentials, and if I have a successful authentication, yes, here it is, the, the headless greeter, and from here, I can authenticate, and if everything works fine, we should have a headless user session. Yes, here it is. And I can also resize the screen. And it works perfectly. There's probably some bugs that might be, need to be found and fixed, but you can work on it. Uh, and I can power off the system from here also. Yes, and that's, that's done. And now, uh, the last thing I want to talk. So the next steps. Uh, the idea is that this new feature to be available for the next NOM release, the NOM 45. That, but this is something that I cannot promise because this work is at merge requests. And some of them needs to, to, to review, and the maintainers are quite busy, so I don't know if it will be possible, but they want it. Uh, so, good. And if you want to test this, I've created a repository at OBS. Here's the name of the repository. From that repository, you can download the GNOME Remote Desktop, and the rest of the modified versions uh, will be downloaded automatically. If you are more interested or interested on the work I've done, I, there's the main merge request with all my changes, and you can take a look. If you want, you can collaborate and help reviewing. Let's join forces to make this land. And also, you can communicate with me and the GNOME people at the GNOME Shell channel that's on, on IRC and Bridget with Matrix. 
And one last thing I'd like to tell is that I had an interesting question about why are we authenticating twice? Once with the RTP protocol and then we authenticate with GDM. And why uh, and a different approach would be to just use your user credentials in the RTP authentication and directly get your user session, which actually Windows does it that way. But uh, I didn't have the answer when I was asked, but now I have the answer. <laughs> so um, the RTP protocol has different security methods, and none of them is actually very compatible with the authentication GDM does because it uses some uh, hash of the password and then the GDM wouldn't connect with that, or PAM, actually. But there's a, a future step that might be interesting of using Kerberos authentication. The RTP protocol has created a new security method that it uses the Kerberos authentication, and maybe in a future, if we put work on it, we might have a Kerberos server that can, the, 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 the system daemon that I worked on, can communicate with it, get authentication, and directly get your user session. But this is something for the future, and first we are focused on getting this approach and get something that we can use. So that's it. Thank you for being me and listening to me, and if you have questions, I'm here. Hi. Um, so uh, the thing is, uh, when you authenticate it with RDP, you only uh, typed in the password, not the username, or was the username specified in a different way? In the example I gave, you mean? Yeah, I only saw you type in the password. Yeah, because in the command I can put a parameter of my username, it was. Yeah, the, the RDP authentication is using a username and a password. Yeah. Okay, so that's different from VNC, I see. Because hmm. VNC only has a, a password. password. Yeah. And that's why uh, there was a login screen with, uh, with a VNC approach. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, the, the idea was probably everyone gets a shared password just hmm. to get to the login screen so that, I mean, no random guy can just try yeah. to DOS the system. Uh, but then you log in with your uh, username and password. Okay, this approach see, okay. looks like a lot of what you're seeing with the VNC approach. And because yeah. the RTP protocol comes, it's like designed by the Microsoft team and the Microsoft is using directly username and password to allow directly starting a user session. So here it's a kind of a mix of using one shared password for the RTP part and then the EDM. Is there any plan to enable VNC for Wayland? Um, well, there's actually, with the GNOME Remote Desktop, a VNC backend, but it only works for local, local user sessions. Because the VNC doesn't have this uh, fancy method of server redirection, the workaround should be very different. And I don't know if it's something that why, why would we want to have VNC and RDP? If just with RDP works, let's keep it, you know, I don't know. Maybe in the future, because RDP also has some, some positive parts of security that VNC lacks. Well, if I'm not mistaken, RDP is not a standard protocol. It's like um, a proprietary protocol developed by Microsoft. So I'm not sure if there are RDP clients for all possible platforms. So mm. That would be probably one reason. Mm. But maybe, meanwhile, because there is an open source project, maybe we have a client for each platform that is relevant. Yeah. Yeah, the, the free RDP is the implementation of the RDP protocol that is available for Linux. And I don't know if it's available also for other platforms. But I know that there are some RDP clients from Android and iOS and you name it, and I've tested with the new FreeRDP version, the FreeRDP 3, that I suppose this year will be released. It will be possible to use this approach with also Windows clients and, and Android clients and iOS clients. Okay, then we're covered. Thank you. Hey, so, um Last time I tried to use GNOME uh, Remote Desktop, um, by default, 
uh, if you're accessing remotely and you're inactive for some time and the screen gets locked, hmm. um, the daemon apparently stops running or yeah. you lose connection. Yeah. So my question is, with your implementation, does that still happen? Yeah, that's an issue that what they, they knew and they changed it when the session is headless. Because the, the, when the screen is locked, then the, the remote client will be disconnected to keep security because it means no one will be on a local okay. system. So that makes sense. But on a headless session, it doesn't make sense. So it's changed. So I think the behavior is still the same if you're losing, uh, connecting to the local session. But when the session is headless, you get the locked lock screen also remotely. Great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Joao. Thank you. Thank you.